OK, hi, everyone. It's uh, four o'clock here in the UK. Um, and welcome to another of the SimSip Scientific Webinar Series presentations. Uh, Gustus, you got this slide and stop sharing. Um, but um, essentially, um, as usual, um, we have a presentation. Um, we're going to have a time for questioning at the end. Um, so feel free to save those and raise your hand, or you can use the chat feature, and I'll be able to read them out at the end of the presentation. Um, on the next slide, um, you'll see the bio for um, today's speaker, Dr. Konstantinos Stamatopoulos, or better known as Costas. Um, so um, he's a biopharmaceutics investigator at GSK um, and had a PhD degree in chemical engineering at University of Birmingham. So he's got a lot of background experience in terms of in vitro and silico tools um, for colon specific drug de delivery systems, PBBK, physiologically based by pharmaceutics modeling, food effects, um, and you've had several papers, I think, around this area, and di digital twins of human or organs. So um, the interest, obviously, uh, today is uh, around um, uh, this um, paper that you had, um, developing PPK model for highly lipophilic zwitterionic drugs and to predict food effect. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'll just uh, pass over to you and uh, you can take it from here. Thank you, Costas. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you for the introduction and for inviting me to present our work uh, on this topic. So as Oliver said, this is a, a recently published uh, work on, on this topic, and I will present a business class for zuterionic um, drug, GSK 3640254. From now on, I will just use the last three numbers, 254, to refer uh, to the drug, uh, much easier. And I will also speak a little bit about how we use high-throughput automation platforms to obtain data and inform <clears throat> the PBK model. Of course, I'll go through the uh, modeling strategy and then some key learnings uh, from this um, work that we conducted this uh, uh, last year, actually. Um, so this is the, the title of the publication. So if you want to, to know more and go through the, all the details, you can, I would like to refer to our, our paper. Uh, a little bit of background about uh, 254, as you can see, is a high molecular, uh, small molecule above 500. Uh, it's a high lipophilic. Log P is uh, a mo more than five. And is also Zuterion. And we had a particular interest in, on that drug because we saw <coughs> sorry, some interesting um, clinical data uh, when we administrate this drug with uh, high fat and moderate fat meal, where we saw 20 to 24% reduction in CMAX with a high fat meal. Uh, but also, um, we can see here the ionization uh, state of the drug and the different coexisted um, species, ionized species, as a function of pH. And you can see with respect to the pH in the small, along the small intestine and the mucus, the ionization of this drug will, will differ. So we we're thinking that this drug will be sensitive to uh, pH and the, in general the luminal environment. And we would like to understand why we are seeing this reduction in CMAX uh, when we administer it with high fat meal uh, and try to support um, the project uh, with respect to drug product development, labeling, and all the stuff. And of course, when we're talking about uh, food effect, we know that uh, food changes the human physiology in many different ways. Uh, first and foremost, differences in the gastric emptying. So we know that this will impact uh, CMAX and, and TMAX of, of the drug. 
but also changes in the luminal composition. Uh, for example, we have more uh, biosalts compared to fast state, but also the presence of um, uh, food digestion uh, products. Uh, this will impact, of course, solubility and maybe so dissol um, a dissolution uh, if there is any, you know, formulation effect. Increase the blood flow rate, uh, and this will impact uh, drug absorption and also uh, gut wall metabolism as you increase the uh, the um, the blood flow in the enterocytes, and you may wash faster your drug from the enterocyte, avoiding metabolism and uh, hence maintain the concentration gradient, which is the driving force for um, for permeation and absorption. But also, you might have impact from from the food. Um, with, with respect to uh, viscosity, that might affect the disintegration again and the dissolution of of the of the drug in in the stomach, and also you change the transient times. And again, if your if the drug uh, is sensitive to uh, luminal conditions, then this will impact um, dissolution and absorption because of course you have differences also in the enterocyte in terms of surface. Uh, sorry in the different regions of the GI tract in terms of surface area, but also if your drug is a substrate of uh, transporters or uh, enzymes, this will, this will also affect uh, absorption, but also the overall uh, bioavailability. When I say bioavailability, I mean the fraction that uh, reach the systemic uh, circulation before any you know metabolism in the liver or so. Uh, so when, when we were thinking about, OK, where to look first? Uh, from all these um, factors and um, knowing that a preliminary work showed that our drug is low soluble in in uh, passive but highly soluble in in passive and uh, um, the pH has a, a significant impact on on the solubility even with a small deviations in the in the pH and we were looking a little bit in the literature to, to understand first of all if there are other you know physiologically relevant um factors that may affect the solubility that we cannot control, like, for example, uh, pH or the, the concentration of the of the biosalts between a moderate and high fat uh, meal. There are not many studies that comparing um, uh, two um, um, meals, I mean, with respect to the fat content between moderate and high fat, but at least the available data uh, suggested that there is no much impact on the pH and the biosalt concentration um, between the moderate and high fat uh, meal. Then we looked a little bit to the gastric emptying. We know that uh, there is a difference between high fat and low fat meal, but what about if you have something in, in between? Uh, Based on my knowledge, I couldn't find something apart from this um, uh, Armand et al. 2004 study, but that was in the pediatric population. Uh, so we didn't know if this reflects also in um, uh, adults. So is it true that there is no uh, gas and emptying differences between the two mills? So what we've done, uh, we used uh, team one and in, in team one, we homogenized um, the two meals that we used in the clinical studies. So the meals were exactly the same with the clinical studies. And we also kept the, um, the gastric emptying rate in this tool the same between the two uh, meals. So to exclude any, as much as possible, any impact coming from viscosity or uh, gastric emptying. And it seems that team one picked up the what we saw in the clinic, higher exposure and Cmax with a moderate fat. And this is the case also with the team one. We saw 20 to 22% higher bioaccessibility of the drug with a moderate fat meal, which was similar to the differences in the Cmax. Uh, and when we are say bioaccessibility in team one, we are talking about the fraction of the drug can pass through the filtration system that team one uh, has uh, with the uh, with the micelles together. Um, so no changes in the pH, no changes in the biosalt. It seems that the gastric empty is not uh, the answer. So we had to look to the differences in the fatty acid composition and in general the composition between the two um, meals. And you, can, and you see here 
uh, the two uh, means that we used in the um, clinical studies. Uh, in the first look, you see that with the fi high fat, we have more oleic acid and in general um, uh, unsaturated fatty acids compared to the moderate uh, fat. However, keep in mind that at least as far as, as we know, there's no any study uh, that has characterized lumina, uh, human uh, lumina aspirates after moderate fat to be a, to make absolutely sure that, for example, the palmitic acid will be the predominant free fatty acid in, in the lumen and try to develop um, uh, uh, barrel media. If there is any knowledge or so, please, through your questions or your comments, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, to know that and uh, revisit our work. So once we said, OK, let's look to, to the composition, um, we went then to, to the literature to, to see what is the range of different, you know, uh, um, uh, luminal components, bisulfate, phospholipids, cholesterol, free fatty acids? And as you can see here from this nice table summarized by Pendafraga et al. Uh, group, uh, the, the, the range is um, time dependent and regional um, dependent. And when we were thinking about how to explore the, the effect of media composition that will, that would be a lot of work that should be done um, and also we want to know whether or not not only quant quali uh, quantitative but also qualitative uh, differences uh, might affect the solubility of the drug we want to look whether or not glycine version versus tavern conjugated biosolids mixtures might affect the, the solubility of, of of the drug and based on the two studies we know that there are population differences so in some population you may have more glycine uh, and in some other population can be in, in a balance between glycine and tampering uh, conjugated so uh, i have done this type of work when i was doing my phd trying to create uh, different compositions analyze the solubility go to the hplc do it again and again that will take months of 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 work, but when you want to support a project, you need to make it faster and efficient. So with this in mind, oops, what happened? Ah, so um, so in this in mind, we um, use a high throughput uh, automation platform to do this job um, for us. Uh, and we can really save a lot of time. Uh, I will show you in the following slides. Um, we reduce um, the manual work. Um, we can run, of course, uh, a lot of experiments in a very small scale, which means less API, less biosolid, less you know chemicals to 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 be used, and um, of course, to get the same re results, regardless of the of the experience of the of the person that actually uh, run um, uh, these experiments uh, for, for for us, and of course, you can easily um, monitor different parameters um, during the, the the experiment, like for example, um, uh, pH, uh, temperature, all all these kind of things, um, and run many many replicates uh to make sure that you don't have you know any um outliers that actually um uh, ruin your 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 results um and of course uh it's really easy to to collect your data digitize them and then uh, report them and fit them in in into the model uh so here um, you can see the, um, the workflow that we uh, followed. So initially we uh, prepare ethanolic solutions for each component uh, separately, and then automatically the platform will mix the right portions of each component to have the right concentration that we want. Uh, then we move, remove the ethanol and then we just uh, dissolve um, the film that is formed into the blank uh, passive or passive um, uh, buffer. And 
And then once we have uh, done that, we add our um, API um, in the different you know, um, compositions. Uh, we hit up, we steer it, and then after that, it's time for sampling and some preparations here before we uh, measure the, the, the solubility. And during the experimentation, we measure the temperature, as I said, and, and pH to make sure that we don't deviate from the initial pH because especially for this drug, of course, in general, when we measure solubility, but particularly for this um, drug, it was important to keep the, the, the pH constant as much as possible. Uh, here you see um, uh, the results. It's just a, believe me, it's just a blink of, of the data that we generate, but just to give you um, an overview uh, on that. Um, before we use the data to the PBBK model, we want to do some statistical analysis and see if indeed biosalts, different mixture of biosalt, uh, phospholipids, fatty acids, et cetera, et cetera, will affect um, the, um, the solubility of, of, of the drug. Um, we test the, the, facet, uh, the solubility in the facet media only at one uh, pH because preliminary work so, showed that these concentrations of the components is not that much the pH, but is the concentration of the of the biosolids and the phospholipids that um, uh, play a role, and not the ionization of of the drug. Is in other words, um, even the ionized um, uh, molecule won't be that soluble uh, in those uh, in these concentrations. Um, so the colors, uh, the, the squares around them. The, sorry, the boxes around with the same color is just for you to easily compare different media. So, for example, with the orange one, you can compare uh, the media only with uh, tavrocholate and the, the other media here, uh, solution six, with a mixture of, of biosalts. And composition one means uh, you have more um, glycine conjugate biosalts. And composition two, you have more tavern conjugated biosolids based on the two um, um, compositions that I showed to you from the two uh, in vivo studies. Um, and if you look, for example, here in this uh, green box and you compare it with the other one here, is solution two and three, it's just um, single biosolid, uh, phospholipid. Uh, and cholesterol, and then you see composition one and two with the addition of uh, phospholipids and cholesterol. And as you can see, there is no statistically significant difference between uh, the two set of, of of media. And the last one is when we add, on top of the other components, we add um, uh, oleic acid. And in, in that case, uh, in, in this case, the combination of mixture of biosalt, not, not just a uh, single biosalt, and oleic acid start affecting the, the solubility of, of the drug, not all, in all cases. Um, uh, but uh, this statistically significant difference from, from, from the other uh, uh, media. If we move to the fed media, you will see the impact of the pH at elevated concentration of the components. But again, if you look closely to the composition and compare the same uh, pH, the main difference is uh, when we add uh, oleic acid. For example, if you look to the first three bars here, um, the, at pH 5, when you have only phospholipids, you have higher solubility compared to the other. And this has to do with the Zeta potential, the, the, the surface charge of the micelles and the ionization of the drug that might um, um, promote electrostatic repulsion or attraction forces between the drug. Um, but when we introduce the fatty acids, then we uh, change the charge of the micelles. We make it more negative, and then we have the opposite effect. So the the there, is, uh, there are more repulsion forces at pH 5 at the presence of, of folic acid. But again, if we go to 
P86.5 and 7, where we go closer to the neutral stage of our drug, um, you will see that when we introduce um, oleic acid and we compare between this box here with only tavrocholate and the other two boxes here, the blue boxes with, with a mixture of bias, you see that the uh, differences are not statistically significant, which shows to us that we need to look more to the fatty acids rather than to, to the bias salts. But we were able to do that. Oops, sorry. Uh, we were, but we were able to do this, uh, all this work, uh, using the high throughput automation. And you see here the uh, the numbers. We just needed five days to to complete uh, the work and collect almost 400 data points and be able to do statistical analysis and assess which is the most important component for the solubility of the drug. We can, of course, open here the discussion and, and have a separate, let's say, webinar to discuss around if we need to add more components, uh, use different versions of fast phase if available in the literature. Um, but here it was the point he was here to understand which is the most important um, uh, 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 factor or component that will affect the, the, the solubility to support our previous uh, uh, hypothesis. Um, so yes, that, these are the key observations from this uh, work that there is a, a pH uh, a media uh, dependent uh, solubility, but of course there are not statistically significant difference between single and mixture of of, uh, of bisols, and that was also the case between the two compositions. Um, so any population differences in the luminal uh, so in the bisol composition between glycine and, and tavrin conjugated, at least for this particular drug, this won't be any issue uh, for the in vivo performance and the in vivo behavior of, of the drug. And it seems that the oleic acid is the main component that will affect the solubility of 254. And the main reason is, well, uh, there are two reasons. One is that oleic acid uh, affects the zeta potential, the charge of the micelles, and also oleic acid alongside phospholipids will uh, increase the volume of the micelles and make the, their core more lipophilic, and that helps to accommodate to a more, more drug and solubilize it. Um, and the interesting thing is that oleic acid has had a negative impact in fasted concentration and a positive impact in, in uh, the fed. Um, uh, concentrations, which is another thing we need to keep in uh, mind. And I will show you later on how this helps to uh, develop a robust uh, model. So now how we integrate the, the, the data from the automated platform. So once we have done the statistical analysis and we pick up these solubility data that actually uh, uh, help us to understand the behavior of, of the drug in the different um, uh, media uh, compositions, then we need to integrate this and understand how this will affect the uh, in vivo performance of, of the drug. And when we when we estimate um, the, the total solubility of, of the drug, uh, one of the most important parameters is this KMW, which is the micelle to water partition uh, coefficient. And you can see here uh, the different equations used in the PBK models uh, to estimate uh, the, the solubility of the dissolved uh, drug for different classes. Uh, in any case, we, we assume a linear correlation between um, the, the bisol concentration and the solubility. And as you increase the KMW, that also will increase the, the, the solubility estimated. And, and here you, you will see the main mechanism uh, that takes place in, in vivo, starting from the tablet, we disintegrate it, we release the drug particles, the drug particle will, will, uh, will start dissolving. Part of it, based on the solubility, will precipitate and resolubilize based on the dissolution uh, rate of this will depend on the solid state of this precipitant. And then the presence of the micelles will um, maintain the concentration gradient between the unsteel boundary layer around a dissolving particle and the bulk media. Uh, that will, and this will um, uh, enhance the dissolution rate, but uh, might also slow it down because, at least theoretically, the, the micelles that will diffuse in this unsteel boundary layer will bound the, the free monomers and 
due to lower diffusivity of the micelle that will has a, a negative impact on the dissolution rate. But keep in mind that this is not only important for, for solubility and dissolution, but it's also for uh, permeation. The theory says that, the, the theory, the assumption, the main assumption is that only the free uh, monomers will permeate to the uh, to the enterocytes, but before the, the drug monomers reach the, the apical membrane, you need to pass through the mucus layer, and there the, the drug bound to the micelle will have less uh, slower the, the, uh, uh, diffusivity, and this will impact the permeability in the mucus and hence the overall permeability. So that's why it's very important this uh, parameter, the KMW, to be well estimated uh, because this will be used for solubility dissolution and for permeability because the look KMW will determine the free fraction available for, for permeation. Moving uh, to uh, the modeling strategy, um, here you see the workflow that we followed. So we start with the healthy Caucasians uh, and then we put all the available uh, measure or predicted physical properties of 254 to uh, SimSip V20 uh, simulator, uh, and we develop a full uh, PBK uh, model, and the elimination and distribution uh, uh, are um, uh, estimated and optimized based on the IV data from a mass balance uh, study in healthy volunteers. Of course, the workflow here will focused on biopharmaceutics, but there are a lot of work uh, and different, you know, separate workflow about elimination, distribution, metabolism, etc. But this webinar will focus on the biopharmaceutics aspect and modeling. So I will separate in between permeability and solubility because different steps uh, were followed. In terms of solubility and, and dissolution, from the high throughput automation, uh, we use the solubility data, I will show it to you how later, uh, to um, to inform, uh, uh, sorry, in the SIVA, we import the data in the SIVA to estimate the low KMW. And this, of course, will um, uh, is an important parameter for the dissolution model, the DLM um, model. And of course, any intrinsic solubility of the drug is also um, uh, important into, into the model. Of course, this drug is really, really extremely uh, push soluble, uh, so we just put a very low uh, value for the intrinsic solubility um, because we didn't have any uh, actual data. We couldn't obtain that. Uh, on the other hand, on the other side, on the permeability, uh, first we perform some sensitivity analysis to understand how the low K will affect um, uh, the permeation and also the physical chemical, uh, sorry, the pharmacokinetics of of the drug. And one of the main questions were, was should we uh, use the free, only the free fraction uh, for permeation, or we should go with the total um, concentration. And we also perform some uh, in vitro permeability experiments using MDCK cell lines uh, and at the presence of barrel van media, fast and passive at different pHs. So we didn't explore only how the media and the pH will affect the solubility, but also the permeability. Because sometimes we overlook that. We we say, okay, if there is no any impact on the solubility, we don't want to look to the permeability. But you will see how we 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 didn't do that. We we look to them separately and we inform um, the model. And then of course, the first time in human uh, mud study to qualify the model developed, and then more clinical data to uh, verify the, um, uh, the model. So the first step was to, as I said, to answer if we need to go with a total concentration or the free uh, uh, fraction. So we perform some uh, sensitivity analysis in the low KMW. So here you see the results. When we use the total concentration, which means bound and unbound uh, drug into the muscles. As we increase the the low K, uh, we increase the the C max and we reduce the T max. It was mainly the um, low K for the ionized species that will affect the the predictions, not that much the the neutral. And the same 
think about the free fraction in terms of who, which one is the neutral or the ionized uh, um, log game W that will affect the predictions was again the ionized, but with the free fraction, what the opposite effect, of course, uh, for C max and uh, we increase the T max and to, to uh, certain degree and then we uh, reduce it. But when we use the free fraction, <clears throat> actually uh, these predictions contradicted with the clinical um, with the clinical data. So we said, OK, for at least for modeling point of view, we need to go with the total concentration. But is it enough? Let's 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 do more work just to make sure that we have the, the right decision and not just you know, uh, develop the model just because we want to capture the clinical data, but we want to understand the, 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 the drug and the mechanism. So what we've done, we performed some permeability experiments with uh, uh, using MDCK cell lines. And as you can see, uh, this GF is just uh, a PGP uh, inhibitor. So we measure the passive um, uh, permeability of, of the drug. Uh, in passive and passive at different uh, pHs. If we look to the passive permeability, which means that we need to look at seven uh, at pH 7.4, which is the neutral stage of, of the drug, you will see that at the present of uh, elevated concentrations of the biosol, the, the permeability was higher. So actually, the, the presence of the myosols and the, and the, and the, and the biosols and all the other components enhance the permeability of this high molecular weight drug. So keep in mind that this is 700 something molecular weight uh, drug. What is the, the exact mechanism behind? We don't know. Uh, we don't know if somehow the micelles uh, allow this drug to permeate within the micelles or the, the presence of, the, of these components might change the fluidity of the cell membrane and uh, helps this high molecular drug to pass uh, through the apical membrane. But the fact is that the presence of of the biosols uh, enhance the permeability. Furthermore, um, we uh, the, the concentration in, in the donor compartment was well below the solubility of the drug in passive and passive media. So we didn't have any precipitation or any undissolved material. And because of the higher presence of, of the of the biosols, we solubilized more drug, and that's why we, we got higher permeability. No, the concentration was well below the solubility of the drug and these two um, media. So based on also in this in vitro um, uh, data and the, this workflow here, uh, uh, decision tree here, we um, end up that we need to go with the total concentration because the biosols and the micelles uh, don't prevent, let's say, the, 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 the absorption, the permeation of, of the drug. And, that, and these results here were really helpful to make this assumption. So another thing here is that we may not be always um, easy to directly integrate in vitro data into the model, but they help to make the right assumptions uh, into the model and progress with the qualification and verification of, of the model. Be before we uh, choose the media to estimate the loci, we first put all the all the experimental values and the and the media in SIVA to um, estimate the loci MW. But as you can see here from the predicted values, uh, SIVA could not capture this um, uh, composition and and pH dependent um, solubility of uh, of the drug. Uh, so we had to uh, come up with a different strategy, how to integrate the solubility data. Uh, to to the model and get the and uh, estimate the log uh, MW. So in order to do that, we split um, the the media in two sets and put them separately in in in, in SIVA. So for the for the passive uh, media, we noticed this negative impact of oleic acid. So we got this um, the typical passive passive media that we normally uh, use at the two typical uh, pHs that reflect the average luminal pH in fast and fed state. And we estimate the log A uh, MW. Apart from the from the neutral uh, log K, which is almost close to two folds, we, we were OK, we pretty much a good job with the ion 
uh, ionized, uh, for, sorry, for the locate for the ionized species. And if you remember, the ionized had had more impact on the predictions compared to neutral. So we leave it as it is and we proceed. And then we use uh, separately the, the other two media that um, contained uh, cholesterol and oleic acid at the same uh, pH and we re-estimate the low KMW for neutral and for the ionized uh, species. And we have also a better uh, predictions and the ratio you see here it's, uh, was, was improved. So the reason why we do that because we had to make sure that we have properly account for the impact of cholesterol and oleic acid as we assume a linear correlation between uh, the, the, the biosol concentration and uh, and uh, the solubility of, of of the drug. So to to let's say to change the slope, if I can say in the background uh, of this linear correlation, it's better to go with with this uh, approach. And when we look to the results, you will see how we improved the predictions for the fast state. Someone could say that okay, even with a convectional media, is not that bad. Is is within the the two the, the percentiles, but because this drug will be uh, administered in, in multiple doses, uh, uh, over predicting the first do dose uh, led to significantly over predict the, the last dose, which was the, the important let's say um, criterion for the model to, to qualify for further um, uh, verification. So we had to fix that. Uh, it wasn't something that we, can, we could overlook because we had problems later for the MAD study. Um, and also, uh, the, all this work and the model show that um, in the fast state, it's mainly solubility limited process. Uh, and that's why we need to pay attention to the media composition. But in fed state is mainly permeability limited because regardless if we use the convectional or the new um, no, the, the other media with the oleic acid and cholesterol, we, we in both cases the solubility is high enough to hit the upper limit of absorption, which is um, which is permeability. And once we were happy with with the model, we we ver verified across uh, uh, four clinical studies and several um, uh, doses. And as you can see, the the model um, did. Um, a pretty good uh, job. Uh, most of this, the, the um, PK data um, was within the um, 1.25 folds error, some of them uh, within two fold errors. But if you think about it, that we are talking about a business class uh, for zuterionic, high molecular, high lipophilic uh, drug with this sensitivity to the, uh, to the media composition and PAs, pH plus. Any intra and in the subject uh, variability, um, I think we are pretty satisfied with the performance of um, of the model. Um, so some um, key learnings about uh, from from this um, uh, work that we uh, conducted. Um, it's it showed that the the predictive power of the model can um, can be improved uh, if we understand uh, the main mechanism of the food effect. We understand uh, the molecule how uh, it behaves. Uh, we have the the means, like high throughput automation platforms, to investigate that without uh, spending too much time and uh, resources to uh, put a little bit more extra work and understand all the factors that affect the vivo performance and have the confidence to use. Uh, PBK, PBB, PBBM models, especially for for food effect and understand the in vivo performance of of drug products, and of course, uh, I said also this many times to to my colleagues that we need high uh, quality in vitro data to import to to the model, and we should not expect models to do magics without good quality data or understanding the the main mechanism and make the right assumptions uh, in, in into the model. And if we cannot uh, integrate always the in vitro data, I mean directly um, the in vitro data into the model, we need them. We need the we need the the you know, extra in vitro data to make the right assumptions 
um, into the model. And just an example is that if we didn't uh, perform the team one work to exclude the impact of gas emptying, we could play around with the gas emptying uh, to understand to 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 um, explain the difference between the two uh, meals, and uh, we would overlook the need to uh, look to the composition and um, estimate properly the and parameterize the, the model properly and predict the the uh, <clears throat> the food effect. So it's always helpful to do extra work to help with the assumptions with uh, with the model. And last but not least, one very important lesson was the collaboration between different teams that generate in vitro and in vivo data uh, to have a common understanding of the data generated and what we need from modeling point of view to be able to explain the in vivo mechanism, the, uh, the, the reason of, for this behavior of, of, of the drug uh, uh, when we administrate different uh, type of, of of meals and not working in 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 in, in silos, that was a really big uh, lesson from this uh, work, and also um, changed the perspective uh, and the, the the general picture from from the other colleagues from the other teams, what we can and what we cannot do with the models, and why we need this or the other in vitro and uh, uh, data, which makes after that your life much easier as a modeler to request and collaborate with with your colleagues and with the with the teams but of course there's always um room for for uh, improvement um the, the one is the the lack of the luminal composition for a moderate fat um uh, meal to allow to build to to to, to develop uh, the barrel var media and go back and develop a meal specific PBBN model and not uh, um, uh, a generic, let's say, uh, uh, model. Um, we need to look more a little bit on how we can and uh, come up with a regional log AMW as we know that the qualitative and quantitative differences uh, in the luminal composition and maybe for this particular drug is not that important in terms of bias salts, but might be important in terms of phospholipid and, and fatty acids and and and, and so on. Um, we need also uh, to harmonize and standardize the the media that we use for solubility and permeability. We know the challenges that we are facing when we want to change the media composition when we perform permeability experiments because of the sensitivity of some same lines at the presence of um, a bias salts and with the integrity of their cell membrane but we can uh, do more on that so we can align these two aspects solubility and and uh, permeability and of course there's a lot of work out there in the, in the literature for different uh, research groups that we are trying to do to do that and i will uh, show to you some efforts that we 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 put with um, colleagues from different universities. And another aspect that we we show is that we might need to um, look to the differences between mucus and lumen uh, because we might overdo it by just using fast and phase media for permeability if the concentrations of of biosalts, phospholipids, and neutral lipids are different between lumen and and mucus, and you might need to uh, develop a mucus, let's say, specific barrel valve media to be used either for solubility but mainly for, for permeability and maybe overcome this issue with the integrity of the, um, uh, cell mem um, the cells lines. And here's a really nice poster from AT, um that shows to you the concentration of bisol uh, lipids and neutral lipids between lumen and mucus in, in rats and you see that there are some significant differences between this uh, between the two environments along the the, the GA track whether or not this is also the case in human we need to uh, explore further but it seems that there is a difference between the two environments and we need to take into account especially with drugs like the 254 with complex interactions with the with the micelles and develop even better uh, models um Future work, uh, we are um, looking, as I said, to other um, fatty acids like palmitic acid, just to understand how this will impact the solubility of uh, 254P 
plug that to plug this to to the model and see if we can understand the differences between the two uh, mills. We applied the model to define a, a clinical level relevant dissolution safe space, um, but this topic will be covered to an upcoming uh, workshop in, in, in Maryland. I have put here um, the poster um, and with some other brilliant colleagues like Xavier and Siri from, from Sertara and, uh, and Xavier from Gastroplast. And we have also a PhD project with uh, Erin Campbell, the PhD candidate, uh, Ibrahim and Hannah Batchelor from University of Strathclyde looking to drug micelle colloidal structures interactions and how this will affect uh, the permeation, which is another um, topic that we need to look at it and see how we can further improve the, <clears throat> the predictions and the mechanics understanding of these aspects. So before I end this presentation, of course, all this work cannot be uh, done by one person. So I really want to uh, thank my colleagues, Paula, John, Yang, and Ying, James, and Nana, uh, because that was a very uh, collective um, effort to build the, the model and understand all these aspects that I present to you um, uh, here. And with that, um, thank you very much for for, for listening to me. Uh, I'm open to any uh, questions and Oliver, over to you now. <laughs>